is a beautiful night here in the Bronx, and it is time for baseball as My Nine presents New York Yankees baseball. It's the New York Yankees against the Arizona Diamondbacks in the middle game of a three-game series from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball along with Al Leiter and Ken Singleton. I'm Michael Kay. Well, the Yankees are playing good baseball. They started off this series with a 4-2 victory yesterday, right in the middle of it with a big hit, as he has been during the Yankees' hot streak, is Robinson Cano. Right now, he's the hitter that everybody expects him to be. Well, last night in the fourth inning, Michael, the Yankees were actually trailing 2-0, but on this 3-2 changeup, the Yankees had a 3-2 lead. Cano's three-run homer was good enough to put the Yankees in the lead. They would never give it up on their way to that 4-2 win you talked about. Last seven games, the entire team has done great. Six and one, they've averaged almost seven runs a game. As a team, they're hitting 321, 13 homers, and a 2.14 ERA. Not too bad. Let's take a look at tonight's pitching matchup brought to you by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Young left-hander Wade Miley goes for Arizona, 2-0, 2.13. Veteran left-hander CC Sabathia for the Yankees, 2-1, 2.25. And now, last time out against the Orioles, CC looked really sharp. Yeah, he did, Mike. Michael, and this should be a good pitcher's matchup. Two southpaws at 11. You know, when you think about CC Sabathia, six months removed from little elbow surgery, everybody's talking about his velocity. This guy knows how to pitch. You talk about the, the start against the Orioles. Eight innings, nine Ks. When he's got that backdoor slider, awfully tough to hit. Well, the Yankees would like some length out of him. Why? Because they don't want to have to go to the bullpen again. Yesterday, the bullpen was absolutely outstanding. Al Leiter will come back and break it down. That's next on My Nine. over to the bullpen and you can't ask for much better than that look at the numbers combined four innings one hit and three strikeouts did not walk a batter that's how you get it done welcome back to the booth that's Al Leiter I'm Michael Kay and Ken Singleton will rejoin us in just a moment that's their formula Al yep. and they really haven't had a chance to execute it this year if it works like that they're going to win a lot of games yeah that's exactly right but first of all let's back up for Ivan Nova to almost have 100 pitches in five innings you don't want your bullpen to have to go four innings every night but with that said Boone Logan I thought looked excellent you know his velocity was up I love the combination that he had he was able to get the four outs you got David Robert uh, Jabba comes in and then David Robertson does the job I think especially with a lineup up like the D-backs. They had five left-handers left not last night. With only having the one left-hander in Boone Logan, it is so important that he's able to execute the way he does because of the other right-handers. But if they can do that with Joe Girardi, you got the left-hander Logan, Jabba, Robertson, and of course Mariano finishing out. Nice combination. So forward from the bullpen last night. That puts some pressure on CC Sabathia to give them some length today. Sabathia will face the Diamondbacks. Middle game of a three-game set. Lineups. First pitch baseball coming up next on My Nine.
Dodge Dart. Verizon Files Quantum Internet, technology that makes you feel superhuman. That's powerful. And by your Tri-State BMW centers. Just a beautiful night in New York City. Great night for baseball. Yankees against the Diamondbacks. Game two of three. Yankees won last night 4-2. to two. Why don't we take a look at the Diamondbacks starting lineup. Brought to you by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia. Dot com. AJ Pollock in left field will lead off. Batting second and playing third base, Martin Prado. Paul Goldschmidt, the first baseman, hits third. Cleaning up and catching Miguel Montero. Cody Ross in right field will bat fifth. Batting sixth and DHing Alfredo Marte. Gerardo Parra in center field will bat seventh. Batting eighth, playing shortstop Cliff Pennington. And Josh Wilson, the second baseman, will bat ninth. On the mound, C.C. Sabathia, the big left-hander, 32 years old from Vallejo, California. This will be his fourth start, his last two very good. He got roughed up in the first one, the 2-2-5 ERA, very impressive. Let's take a look at the New York Yankees pitcher's scouting report, brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. First inning goose eggs hasn't allowed a first inning run in 13 regular season starts is one shy of his career high MLB leader the last seven years 2007 through 2012 he leads in wins and innings pitch third in strikeouts behind Verlander and Tim Lincecum velo down and can pitch we're watching this talking about his velocity being down this guy still knows how to pitch he's a three pitch pitcher command of good fastball gets that breaking ball change up over awfully tough to hit so CC is ready so is Pollock and let's do it here in the Bronx. The first pitch is a strike, and we are underway. Pauk had a couple of doubles here last night. In fact, he's coming off a pretty good homestand. Six for 19 on the homestand. Two for four in last night's game. Missed outside. Phil Cuzzy is the home plate umpire. Two and one. Why don't we see the rest of the umpires? We told you about Cuzzy behind the plate. There's Phil. Ronald Culpa is at first. Chris Guccione is the second base up. And Tom Hallion is over third. There's a strike. Just hits the outside corner. Two and two. AJ Pollock, this young uh, hitter outfielder. You got a guy that is uh, really just the epitome of what the. Arizona Diamondbacks has really kind of molded a lot of their players scrappy aggressive plays the game right fundamentally sound Tried to backdoor break it ball the miss and the count is run full in his last start CC Sabathia had 17 swings and misses against Baltimore that that was a season high and you talk about velocity down if they're not touching it yeah, yeah. does it matter you throw a 91 92 only if you're behind Fly ball, shallow left. Nunez back coming in as Wells, and it's going to drop in. Untouched. Pollock will go to second. Nobody there to receive a throw. And that's a clear instance of a time where you miss Derek Jeter because nobody is better at going back on that ball than the Yankee captain. Yeah, and also, I believe that uh, Vernon Wells took a false step back. There's big swing by Pollock, and you can see Wells is just now coming into your picture. You got to didn't get the best of jumps, and ball falls in for a double. So Pollock now has three hits in this series. All three of them are two base hits. He has 12 hits on the year, and seven of them are for extra bases. I'll make that nine of them are for extra bases. Here's Martin Prado. And a strike. Team Prado in that big Justin Upton trade. 300 hitter last year with the Atlanta Braves. A lot of praise about Martin Prado, not only what he does on the field, but in the clubhouse. You know, you hear that so much. Yeah. So, what does that mean? What does a good clubhouse guy mean? He doesn't get to fights with people? <laughs> No, you, you play well a good point, but you play the game right. You're, you're just a good teammate in, in every sense of the word. It's not being selfish. It's not about your game. It's not about your numbers. It's about winning. 
uh, what Martin Prado is about. We just saw that at bat right, that swing right there, Michael. He's trying to give himself up right here to allow Pollock to get the third base. It's those kind of approaches. There he grounds the ball at Nick, so he doesn't get the runner over. One away. Why don't we check out the defense behind the bat? The Wells, Gardner, and Bosch in the outfield left to right. Infield, Nix, Nunez, Cano, and Euclid, third to first. Cervelli is behind the plate. And Karsten Charles Sabathia is on the mound. I think what I was trying to say, he's a team player. If somebody needs a ride somewhere, somebody needs a ride to the ballpark, he'll give you a ride to the ballpark. He'll swing by maybe five miles out of his way, pick you up, bring you to the ballpark. Buy you lunch. Yeah, that, that sort of thing. Need a couple bucks for gas, you get it. So of our group, it's Kenny. Nobody else even comes close. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's Goldschmidt. Who's the best clubhouse guy you ever played with, Kenny? Mark Belanger. Really? Easily. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Al? I'm going to say John Franco. The guy that uh, united the whole team. Lee May was up there, too. I got to kind of throw Lee. The 1 0. Driven out to right field deep. Going back is Bosch. Turning, looking. See ya. A bullet home run. The other way off the bat of Goldschmidt. And the Diamondbacks lead 2 0. Well, lately, Goldschmidt's been hitting the ball well to the opposite field, including this line drive home run. He had a game winner on Sunday against the Dodgers, single to right field. We told you he's a very strong young man. 6'3, 245 pounds. He gets something out over the plate. He's going to ride it to right. It was up a bit, about thigh high, and now it is in the lower deck in right field. Got a four game hitting streak following this home run. Here's Montero. And Miguel takes outside 1 0. Paul Goldschmidt, you know, you look at that home run right field here. I know Yankee Stadium, short ports and right. 20 home runs last year, 145 games. Again, that's the type of approach that these Diamondback hitters are all about. For a power guy, which I believe Goldschmidt's going to be a 20 plus home run guy, he really uses the whole field. If we watch this series, not just the little guys that are spraying from line to line. Well, there goes CC Street. Was it 13 consecutive turns without giving up a run in the first inning? In fact, it's. He doing that. Right? Yeah. First inning. And uh, his last start, he only threw nine pitches in the first inning. You think he knew I would, that was part of the scout report? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what, Al. You are so lucky you're not on Twitter because people right now are destroying you as a jinx. That's what happens all the time. You bring something up, and, and if it happens, it's your fault. So then mention a, maybe a no-hitter to me. Well, now the only no-hitter could be here. Wade, Wade, Wade Miley. How about a cycle? The 3-1. And Montero walks. All right, but I, I have to say this. Having, having thrown a no-hitter, it's, it's a bunch of bunk. What we say or anybody else says. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's close captioning brought to you by the new 2013 Lexus RX. The last time you had any control over what went on on the field was the last game you played. Right. The ball in the hand. Yes. Bat, the, the bat in your hand, right? right? That's it. Back count quickly 0 and 2. Yeah, watching Cody Ross the last couple of years that with Boston and now here with the Diamondbacks. One thing I've noticed about him that uh, he, this, this man's a very good hitter, hits lefties very well, and likes the low ball. Last night we saw an example of that a couple of hits on the low pitches, likes to drop that bat through the zone. Yeah, I thought that his first base hit to left field off of Von Nova was good curveball down.
first inning here. CC does not have the command that he's had uh, in his previous starts, and uh, he, he's struggling to put the ball where he wants to. Now, in saying that, during the course of a game, you know, good pitchers can overcome that. And all of a sudden, it kicks in, and then it stays. They, they, they maintain it for the remainder of the ball game. New York Yankees baseball broadcast in Spanish. It's available by hitting the SAP button on your television. SAP is brought to you by Toyota. See where it takes you. Test drive one at your local Toyota deal. Toyota, let's go places. Well, generally speaking, Ken, and unlike CC, because he did have 13 consecutive starts with throwing up a zero in the first inning, that's a struggle inning for a lot of starters. Figuring out what's working, if you, you know, if you fastball. You know, it doesn't feel right. It's not at your velocity. There are a lot of guys, first couple innings, they may be in the 90 range, and midway through the game, they tack on a few more miles per hour, get a better feel for your off speed pitches. I think traditionally, the first inning is the inning where most yep. the most runs are scored. And it's primarily because the opposing manager has the opportunity to set his lineup exactly the way he wants to attack it, at least in the first inning. It doesn't always work out that way for the remainder of the game. Behind the left field, the base hit for Cody Ross. Vernon Wells will get the ball in. First and second, still one out. I think if we take a look at that pitch, we'll see it's another pitch that's downstairs. He likes to go down and get it. Yeah. In fact, this isn't even a strike. And he's still able to get it out in the left field for a base hit. Change up grip and cut. Now, that's not what CC wants it to do. Change up from a left handed pitcher should go down and away. He got around it a little bit, ends up being like a Actually, just a mediocre little slurve. Pronate the thumb, invert, kind of throw a little screwball. Here's Alfredo Marte. And there's a strike. Marte was in double A last year, played Mobile in the Southern League, was an all star, hit 20 home runs. And this year finds himself in the major leagues. He's hit four of his last five games. Talk to my old teammate Turner Ward. He, they have two hitting coaches here, Don right. Baylor and Turner Ward. Turner Ward had him down at Mobile as a player. He said this guy right here could turn on any fastball. Watch the CC start off with two two off speed pitches. There's a nice little two seam change up run away. And like most young Players, they, you know, they can hit a fastball coming out of minor leagues. Stability, strike recognition, pitch recognition. The ability of major leaguers to get more than one pitch over the plate. One, two. Two and two. As you move up through minor league systems and you're playing games against other other organizations, the higher you go up, the better the pitchers are. They, they have a better idea of what they're doing. It's just not throwing the ball up there. And Marte goes down on strikes. Two outs. Got a little slider there. It In between curveball slider speed. Something on out front. Marte's out on his front foot. Let's take a look here. Mr. Valley, yeah, a little slider. Nice pitch. That's the difference. Now here is Para. He leads off for the Diamondbacks against righties. Drops all the way to seventh against the left-hander, Sabathia. That was a good breaking ball strike. The one thing Parra has done lately, he hasn't been really hitting the ball that well. He's five for his last 32, but he's reached safely in 11 of 13 games, which tells you he's willing to take a walk and has a pretty good eye at the plate.
high fly ball. Right field. Drifting back is Bosch. And he'll make the play for the final out of the first. But the Diamondbacks get two runs on three hits. The big blow. An opposite field home run on the bat of Paul Goldschmidt. Diamondbacks two. Yankees coming to bat. In center field will lead off batting second playing left field Vernon Wells Robinson Cano hits third and plays second cleaning up first baseman Kevin Yuko's Ben Francisco gets a rare start the DH will bat fifth batting sixth and catching Francisco Cervelli Brennan Bosch and right field will bat seven batting eighth playing shortstop Eduardo Nunez and Jason Nix is a third baseman and he's going to bat ninth 26 year old left hander from Louisiana Wade Miley second in rookie of the year votes to Bryce Harper of Nationals. Like this pitcher a lot. Works fast, throws a lot of strikes. Kind of a competitive bulldog kind of mentality. Let's take a look at the Arizona Diamondbacks pitching scout report. Brought to you by Delta. Keep climbing. We mentioned about the year he had, D backs rookie record. Last year, it wins, starts, and innings 194 and two third innings. Plus, fastball, curveball change. Got an assortment, but he's going to just attack. Better stuff than a Mark Burley. He gets ahead, throws strikes, barely ever turns his back to the catcher, and just pounds the zone. He's an old school, here it is, hit it kind of guy. And he's got good stuff. So here's Brett Gardner to start it off. Not only is this Miley's first ever start against the Yankees, it's his first ever start against an American League East team. Of course, he was a rookie last year, as Al mentioned. So, welcome to the American League East. Yankees have 19 home runs on the season, but only one home run against a left handed pitcher, and that was Gardner against Wei Yin Chen on Sunday night. So far this season, American League teams have had just 26% of their starts made by lefties. National League teams, 34%. There's a base hit for Gordon. So the lefty does not bother him. Why don't we check out the defense that Kirk Gibson has put together? Pollock, Para, and Ross left right in the outfield. Prado, Pennington, Wilson, and Goldschmidt. Third to first. Montero behind the plate. And Wade Miley. Is up now. A little different spot, huh? Kenny Mike bet second yeah. all those years in Toronto as a middle lineup guy. Three, four, occasional five. Tap towards second. This could be two. There's one. And there's two. So a four, six, three double play. Reaches out and his pitch he couldn't pull, but he just taps it towards second. Taylor made double play directly at Wilson. Just a little flip to Pennington who turns it over to Goldschmidt at first base. Well, Al, you recognize that as the pitcher's best friend. They had a, uh, what would be the triple play the other day? The Yankees 
So you're gonna, bar- you're gonna marry a triple play. Can you come up with something on that, Mike? I said uh, if a double play is your best friend, then the triple play has to be your wife. So you ever I, I, pitch I, into a triple play? Did you ever get anybody hit into a triple play? No. no I, boy, I don't remember that. What was it 1969 or something? The Yankees? Yankees have had two since 69, two including since the one uh, on Friday. They've hit into a couple, but they've only turned two since 69. One was in Oakland in 2010. Now, I mentioned on that Triple Crown broadcast that I was in the stadium as a kid, and I thought I saw the first triple play I'd ever seen. Somebody hit a line drive to Gene Michael, stepped on second, threw to first, and Ron Bloomberg just dropped the ball. It would have been a triple play. And somebody who knows Bloomberg said the reason he dropped the ball, he had never seen a triple play either. He panicked. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing Ron is probably not far from the total two minutes. Jokes to you. Great guy. Yes. The one two. As Cano goes down on strikes. No runs a hit, no errors, and because of the double play, nobody left on base. We played one at the stadium. It is two, nothing, Diamondbacks. Nothing Diamondbacks. So CC will try to um, straighten himself out. Didn't have great command in the first inning. Gave up a two run home run to Goldschmidt. Actually stranded two runners as well. So he'll face 8 9 and 1 in the Arizona order. Manager of the Diamondbacks, Kirk Gibson, and today we found out we we all had lunch together. Uh, that our colleague John Flaherty said that Kirk Gibson was the best teammate he ever had. Taught him how to be a big leaguer, the things he had to do. And this is when they were together with the Detroit Tigers. And when a player's like that, sometimes they do become managers. And it certainly worked out for Gibson. Manager of the year in the National League a couple of years ago. Last year, Diamondbacks not quite as successful. Still finished with a 500 record. I, I think in their division, they don't get as much credit as they should. I mean, you got the Giants and the Dodgers. The Giants, of course, have won the World Series in two of the last three years. And the, the Dodgers are spending all the money. That one's driven deep to right center, but drifting back is Gardner. He makes the play to retire Pennington. 
Survey says it's one of your favorite game shows, so play along with Family Feud every weekday. Join Steve Harvey for a full hour of big-time fun and outrageous survey answers. Think your family could win fast money? It's time to play the feud. Weekdays at 5 p.m. on My 9. Was it win fast money? My family could spend money fast. <laughs> We should get the Singletons on Family Feud. Oh, please. Here's Josh Wilson. Count one and Well, when you look at this team and you mentioned about uh, John Flaherty, Admiring Kirk Gibson, the grittiness and the and the gamer type attitude. That that's what they've assembled here. Here's Gibby. You talk about the the, the epitome of that. Of just grind it out, dirty, getting after it. But when you think about the West, and, you know, the Dodgers spent a lot of money and they have you know cache names, superstars across the board. With the Giants, all they did is, as you mentioned, Ken, they went out and won the last two, the last three World Series with a great pitching staff. Not stars at every every position by any means, but you, again, you look at this team and you know relatively either young guys or players that are emerging. And it's hard to really see, you know their biggest star with Justin Upton, and they traded him away for Martin Prado. A lot of these players were locked up with multi-year contracts recently, and they like this togetherness of this team. Talking to everybody around this club, the coaching staff, people who cover the team, they're saying this team is going to be reckoned with in a couple of years. Yeah, we just saw Hitsky and uh, Chavez, and of course, they're, as you call, uh, great clubhouse guys, yep. teammates. And they're veterans who could show some of these younger players uh, how to go about their business as major leaguers. Down looking. I think another thing when you're talking about Gibson, the, the coaching staff that he has assembled, uh, I think they've got some star players as we take a look at call strike three. Knee high, that was a pitcher's call right there. As Wilson is caught looking, it's Phil Cuzzy with the call. And look, you look at the resumes of everybody in the coaching staff, I mean, they, they're just good major league players, just about everybody. This might be the most decorated coaching staff in the history of baseball, collectively. Yeah. Matt Williams. Paul Matt Williams, one year before the strike, there's uh, Alan Travel. He's the bench coach now. Matt Williams, the third base coach. Matt Williams, uh, during the strike year, 94, when uh, he had 43 home runs and was threatening the all time record. He was playing third base for the Giants at the time. And. Uh, did get a chance to break that record that year. Roger Maris's record. Don Baylor, MVP. One and two. 20 combined, 20 All Star selections, Kenny. Yeah. Seven World Series titles, nine World Series titles, a couple MVPs, as you mentioned. Yeah, they should be able to show these young guys the way to go. Yes. That one is chopped to short. Nunez gets it done across the diamond, and that will do it. Diamondbacks go down in order against Sabathia. Miley's turn coming up in the bottom of the second.
start. Alfa Romeo DNA with Dodge Passion and Design with intro league games now being played throughout the season should A, the use of the DH stay as it is, B, teams from both leagues use the DH, or C, the DH be done away with altogether. Text A, B, or C to 70377 or go to my9tv.com. Find out the results right after the game. It's Take on Russ brought to you by Dodge Dart. You know, I love um, discussions and you see the Audi scoreboard, but that's screaming into the wind. The DH <laughs> is not going away in the American League because it's a highly paid position and the union would never allow it. No. And it's not going to happen in the National League for that very reason because the National League owners don't want it. Yeah, so we can have these discussions all we want. It's staying the way it is. Well, if it ever changes, it's certainly going to be a glacial approach. It's, it's not going to happen like next year. Let's put it that way. Well, it, it was it 40 years now? <laughs> That's glacial. <laughs> you mentioned Ron Bloomberg, right? He was yep. the first DH. Against the Red Sox, he walked. You know, the first th comment that I heard that made sense was, and I think the National League owners will come around. I, I'm with you. It's not going to move. And, and the fact that people talk about it is a good thing. Yep. The, the I think they itself. like that. Yes. Driven out to right center field. Para on the run. So is the right fielder Ross. And Ross makes the play up against the wall for the first half. Who gave it a ride here? Let's see. A little 3 2 fastball. Middle, outer third. That right center gap. Cody Ross gets a beat on it right up to the wall. You know, one thing I noticed last inning on the fly ball that Para hit to Bosch that ended the uh, bottom of the first inning, Bosch had to come in on the ball at the very end. And I think the wind is affecting uh, the ball in that direction, not carrying the way it should. Whoa, not quite as clean as you would think, but wow. to get that hand over the top. That one has popped up. Center field of Para comes in to retire Ben Francisco. Wow, how about this, Kenny, huh? Every little leaguer out there, they say, put the hand right near the glove. Without that, Cody Ross would have dropped that ball. Two hands. That's your Willie Mays basket catch. He did that with two hands, though. He did, huh? Yeah, there's not many Willie Mays is around. And Cervelli pops it up. Montero gives it a look. And covers his head. He had no idea where that was. <laughs> Al, you were making a point about the National League owners. Yeah, okay. I, I, I think at some point it made sense to me. When you look at these aging stars, and I'm not talking about the 37-year-old guy who's, who's going to get a you know, two- or three-year deal, but the Albert Pujolses and the players and the Prince Fielders, uh, that, that really the landing spot, if you're going to give them a multi-year deal, is eventually they become a DH. A long term and these contracts now seven eight nine ten years you, you are at a disadvantage as a National League owner that you can't sign those guys because you know on the back end there's no plot there's no place for them. yeah they're going to gravitate towards the American League like pool host so you're missing out on the Prince fielders as a result of your league not being able to put a spot have a spot for them. now let me give you the flip side maybe they're happy about that they don't have to sign the long-term deals because okay. there's no place to put those guys but if they're still productive Michael and the rules dictate that you could use them and they're going to drive in a you know close to 100 runs mm -hmm. might get you to playoffs in the World Series high pop-up shallow right Cody Ross, a long run, makes the play in foul territory. The Yankees are down in order. One, two, three. Let's go to the third inning here in the stadium. It's 2 nothing D backs.
and they're playing a doubleheader. That was a continuation of the game that got uh, suspended because of rain, so they're playing a regularly scheduled game. Cincinnati's up 2 nothing. Here's Martin Prado against CeCe. They lost, they today. lost today. Oh, did they lose today? Right. Do, you, do, you, do you even listen to me? I mean, really. <laughs> I just said it. Do you even listen to me? It's like I'm not here. <laughs> All right, truth be known, I just came back, had a little bite of pizza. Just <laughs> no, you had your headset on when I said I it. I just put it on. <laughs> still a good story. It was a one nothing loss wow. to the Royals. They're still in first place, though. How's the pizza, Al? <laughs> Popped up. Backing up Nunez coming in is Wells, and Wells makes the play. Should be interesting to see the approach that CC has on Goldschmidt this time. Goldschmidt has proved that he can hit the ball out over the plate and hit it well to the opposite field. He had a base hit to right field last night, so it might be time for the Yankees to change up. He's got a four game hitting streak now, six for his last 13. Hit 353. Goldschmidt was really helped in his maturation. By Lyle Overbay. The Diamondbacks rave about how Overbay helped the guy who was essentially going to take his job. Taught him to become a much better defensive first baseman. How to carry himself in the big leagues. And uh, I guess in, in all walks of life, they call that paying it forward. Somebody did it for you, and you do it for them. You know, also, too, Michael. For Lyle Overbay, you, you get a position in your career where you kind of know where you sit. And you, you evaluate and you see where the, the club's going. You know your age and where your contract tenure is. And that's a good team. You're right. A young player, Goldschmidt, that you know he's the future. I just think, I mean, looking at Paul Goldschmidt right here, Kenny, is it, there's not a whole lot of movement. And for a power guy to not be a pull hitter, you know, to, as well as he goes the other way, he doesn't dive into home plate. This would be a fastball inside here. Fly ball, right center, and Gardner cuts in front of Bosch for the second half. You know, over the years, you talked about not much movement there. I think the hitter that it had the least amount of movement I ever saw was Paul Molitor. Just. Baby step and a swing and a line drive somewhere. Not even a step. He needs to just pick his heel up a boom. little bit. Yeah. I don't know how he did it, but it worked for him. Pitch outside to Miguel Montero. Well, we talked about CC trying to settle down after the first inning. Tired seven in a row now. But the pitch count is up there at 54. There's Andy Pettit. His bullpen went well yesterday, and he's going to start Friday in Toronto. So the Yankees don't think his uh, back stiffness was an issue. He's gone off to a great start, 2 0. Swing and a miss. Montero down on strike. So CC works a 1 2 3 inning. We go to the bottom of the third. Bosch will lead it off.
showdown here at the stadium. Coverage starts at 6 with Audi batting practice today. Only this. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Beautiful night here in the Bronx. Paul Goldschmidt's two-run home run in the first inning holding up to this point. And it'll be the bottom third of the Yankee order against Wade Miley. You take a look at this Yankee lineup against the left-hander, and you realize how much they miss a Jeter and a Teixeira and an, an Alex Rodriguez as well. You know, the righty hitters are not the same as the lefties, so it's, it's a much different lineup against the left-hander when you consider a guy like Francisco Cervelli, who's had a nice start to the season, is batting sixth. And then you have Bosch, who's a lefty hitter, batting seventh. It's almost like he drew the short straw tonight and has to face the left-handed pitcher. And now you were talking about Miley. Miley last year in his rookie year made the All-Star team, made the National League All-Star team. And 16 wins for the Diamondbacks a year ago. It's a club record for a rookie. Nunez takes the strike. Chasing the pitch way outside. Well, I think there's no question, Michael. When you look at the, the injuries that have riddled the Yankees, and if they can just not say tread water, because I know that's not the way they feel, but guys that are now getting an opportunity to play more at bats, play every day, you know, this is your chance. You know, some guys don't always get extended chances if they're viewed as, you know, a reserve player, a utility player, a, you know, designate this guy as a fourth outfielder, whatever. You know, you, these guys have a chance to shot. They're big league players. You know, there's no question that the guys that you mentioned are missed. Jason Nix on deck. Share again today, taking ground balls around first base. And took some swings in the pool underwater. You know, just trying to uh, strengthen that wrist. That's the way I hit against Ron Guidry all the time. I just like I was swinging underwater. <laughs> Tied him up. Did he go? Ready. No. Said Culpa. A fastball in. Swing and a miss, two away. Girardi spoke about how different his lineup is against lefties, specifically without the switch hitters. Not having text and not having swish because now, you know, when you look at the way we're kind of made up, those guys are left-handers, um, in a sense. So it is a little bit uh, different against left-handers, and that's why we have to move some guys around. What he means by that, Swisher is a, a right fielder who hits righty and lefty. Each row hits just lefty. And Mark Desher is a switcher to first base. Overbay just hits lefty. So, you know, you have to have four players instead of two when you lose switch hitters. Throw in Brandon Bosch. Right. There's your fourth outfielder. Value of, of switch hitters. We, we talked about that last night, right? The Yankees for the, the last time they won the World Series, they had four. Yep. Switch 2009. hitters. 2009. And they'd had one every year since 1948. Was that uh, was mentioned? Yeah. At least one switch hitter on their team. Two and two. Think of Miley so far out. Oh, just exactly what I thought. Pound in the zone, good playing. That pitch there, 94, 
not afraid to come inside. Why should he? 93, 94 miles an hour coming from the left side. But if you just see, he's at, right back on the mound. No nonsense. Here it is. Never shakes. Last year, the Diamondbacks pitcher of the year as a rookie. It's even more impressive. I didn't miss quite much. Good slider. Is it? Kind of, he calls it a curveball. 84 miles an hour is really slider speed. You see the break on that. Montero trying to stick it, hold it on the inside corner. Yeah, it's inside a little bit. Phil Cousin got it right. Had a walk to this. Well, here's the results and how they voted for the rookie of the year. Bryce Harper. Just beat out Miley 112 to 105 and Todd Frazier had a good year. He had 45 now in the sporting news voting Wade Miley did in fact win the rookie of the year and he finished ahead of Bryce Harper, but this is the uh, The voting by the Baseball Writers Association of America Todd Frazier Tom's over south kid yeah. Harper's off to a pretty good start this year. Wow Great spring training, good start. I think Bob Lorenz and I did that uh, spring training game in, or that exhibition game in Washington. And during the game, Harper got a hit his first time up. It was his 11th consecutive hit in spring training. Kenny, were you doing the game with me last year in the regular season? And did Harper strike out six times in the game against the Yankees? It was five. Five times. Andy Pettit just schooled him. Now you see it, now you don't. And that's part of growing up. Yeah. He was a very young player. He was 0 for 7 in an extra inning game with five strikeouts in that game. Probably the worst day he's ever had in his life. The one two just missed outside. Oh, what a play by Prado to get the force at second. Took an extra base hit away from Gardner. Wow. Outstanding defensive play. Great hands by Prado. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. Could have been a big inning, but Prado said, no, nope, we'll stop it right here.
singles last year. Second most in franchise history. Now, who holds the record for most singles in a season for the Aches? We'll find that out in the bottom of the inning. Cody Ross leads off, takes a pitch low, 1 0. Or you could guess. Less than. I got in trouble. Did you really? Yeah, I almost got suspended. <laughs> Count 2 0. Most singles in a season. Rounded to Knicks. That's that's easy. Really? I think so. All right. <laughs> All right. So you're going to answer that question before it comes up on the screen. Though. I will. All I right. will. I actually can give a, a clue. Now, I don't know what it, this means, but I'm told by our producer, Bill Bowen, he is in the building. I, and I didn't even need that, Billy. Wow. Did you see him in the building now? No, but I know who it is. Huh? Count one and oh. Count two and oh. Fly ball, center field drifting back to right center is Gardner for the second out. Good location right there. Scout report on Alfredo Marte can hit a fastball. CC, couple off speed pitches, gets in a fastball count. Watch the location here. Savelli doesn't, barely moves his glove. It's down and away. That's a little below the knees. Good pitch, good location to a good fastball hitter. You know what? He drove the ball pretty well to uh, almost to the warning track in right center. This young man might have a future in the big leagues. He's showing that type of power. You get to the big leagues because you can hit a fastball. And it, you remain in the big leagues, and then you, because of the fact you adjust to the other pitchers, pitches that the pitchers are throwing, the curveballs, the sliders. Drag bunt, it is a beauty, it's a base hit. So Gerardo Parra laid it down beautifully once it got past the pitcher, and once Euclid fielded it, there was no chance. Yeah, Parra's now reached safely in 12 of 14 games. It's, that was textbook. Squared. He's leaning, gets a pitch that he can actually drag with him. If it pitches away, he's not going to do that. He's going to take it. And those are his skills as a leadoff hitter, although he's not batting leadoff tonight. It's so effective against the lefty because the lefty's falling off to the third base side. And there's a strike to Pennington. We saw it last night with Brett Gardner trying to bunt attempt against Matt Reynolds, a reliever for the D-backs. Didn't get it far enough. Matt Reynolds ended up making a nice play. That was a good bunt right there. Barrow was able to push it toward Robinson Cano. Runner goes. Foul back. As a team, the Diamondbacks have four stolen bases this year. They haven't been running very often. And Para has three of them. The other belongs to Pollock. Gibson created a little movement in the middle infield. A little hit run action. Cliff Pennington not as good against left handed pitchers. He switched over to 077 coming into tonight's game. Popped up behind the plate and out of play. You know, this is the time of year, though, that you can take uh, batting averages with somewhat of a grain of salt because. If you're struggling and you have two, three good days in a row, all of a sudden you're about where you want to be. You can jump your average from the 100s into the 300s in about four days.
and vice versa. You can go the other way quickly as well. Strike three. Pennington down looking. No runs to hit, no errors, and one man left. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It'll be Wells, Cano, and you can see. Sixty-nine singles last year, second most in franchise history. So, Al, who holds the record for most singles in a season for the Yanks? Well, it messed me up. I was going to say uh, Don Mattingly, but I think it's going to be uh, be strange for the manager of the Dodgers to be in the ballpark. Tonight. Right, right. So that's why I said Bernie Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Vernon Wells pops it up behind the plate. Montero makes the play. So let's see I think it's who Steve, it was. Steve Sachs, I think. Yeah, no. <laughs> Stevie Sa was there that year. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Did you notice he stopped at first a lot? I didn't notice that. Steve Sachs, 171 hits. Wouldn't you think, Donnie? 171 the first singles. singles. I'm sorry. But no, I wouldn't think Mattingly would have he was that many doubles singles. Because he doubles all the yeah. time. Too many doubles. Didn't he have like 50 doubles one year? And like six grand slams. You know what? The year that he had the, the Grand Slam, six Grand Slams, or was it the only Grand Slams in his whole career? That was 88? I was there. It was either 88, 87. Cano takes high. Should have known that, right? In the ballpark. <laughs> Bernie wins. Well, Bernie Don't could be Mattingly. somewhere in the ballpark. Yeah, Mattingly kind of. <laughs> Steve Sachs had the unenviable task of taking over second base from Willie Randolph. And nice play there. He could hit. He was an all-star a couple of times with the Yankees. Five times overall with the Dodgers and the Yankees. Soft ground ball to second base. Wilson gets Cano for the second out. MLB.TV is celebrating 11 years. Join the millions of fans and subscribe today. Watch every out-of-market game live online on your favorite mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.TV Premium. Visit MLB.TV today. MLB.TV Baseball Everywhere. <laughs> Mattingly actually holds the record for most doubles in a season by the end. He's 53. Count on 
two on Euglis. Euglis flirted with a home run the other way, but Cody Ross ran it down in the second inning. Now you're you're right. Miley works very quickly, like he's ready to go to the next town on this road trip. And Euglis gets plucked. But if I were he, I would not be in a hurry to go to Colorado. <laughs> that's where <laughs> they're headed. That's where they're headed next. Mets and Rockies were postponed today. I don't know if if you guys got a chance to watch any of the Met game. I mean, that's just not great condition for playing baseball. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good for the sport. I saw the highlights. All the players dressed up like the Michelin men. Yeah. It? It was cold. Now they're not making up tonight's game tomorrow. They're only going to play one game. So they are going to have to go back to Colorado to make up that game. Yankees going to have to go back to Cleveland to play, play a doubleheader. Ben Francisco with a fly ball to right. Cody Ross is there and puts it away for the final out of the fourth. No runs, no hits, and one man left. Let's go to the fifth inning. It's 2 nothing down the base. Switch the Time Warner cable and enjoy better. We're so sure you'll see the difference. We guarantee it. April 17th, 1951, Bob Shepard debuts as Yankee PA announcer, and Mickey Mantle makes his major league debut in right field. Josh Wilson will lead off against Sabathia. Fouls it back. Mantle played right field because Joe DiMaggio was in center field. That's a nice lineup to break in with. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people didn't know that Jackie Jensen actually played for the Yankees. He spent the majority of his career with the Boston Red Sox. Driven out to right center. Long run for Gardner. He can't make the play. It's off his glove. Brennan Bosch picks it up, fires it in, but heading to third is Wilson, and he is in there with a triple. A good effort by Gardner. He had a long way to go and almost made a spectacular grab on the warning track in right center field. Let's see if he gets he got some leather on it, but it was tumbling as he was making the catch. And it, originally I thought he'd been injured on the play, but he stayed down to stay out of the way of Bosch and the relay throw, which is late. As Wilson has himself a three base hit. Mm. Kind of in and out of the glove. He can't hold on. Yankees hitting the corners back at short and second. Fly ball right field. Bosch is there. He'll make the catch. Tagging is Wilson. Here's the throw. Not in time. 
Sack fly for Pollock, and it's 3 0 Arizona. I'll tell you, the more and more I see of Pollock, and this is the first series I've seen him play, I, he is, uh, looks like he's going to be a keeper. Number one draft pick. We saw him down in the lineup last night. He has a double again tonight. He scored a run, driven in a run now. See the scoreboard is three nothing on the Optimum scoreboard. Optimum, your we're your TV, phone, and internet company. A strike to Martin Prado. Talking about the trade of Justin up, and maybe the uh, D backs figured we could. We got Pollock in the wings here. Open the door for him a little bit, see if he can uh, work his way into this lineup. And he's hitting over 300 coming into tonight's game. Well, there's another guy they really like. Adam Eaton came on the scene last year. He's on the table yeah. with a strained elbow. He's really the guy I think that they looked as another component to this young outfield that's going to emerge as, as a star. They really like Adam Eaton. Count one and two. The Yankees have just one hit. Against Miley, and that was a leadoff single by Gardner. So they're trailing three nothing. Ball right field. Brennan Bosch is there. Sunday night, it's big laughs. Millions of years in the making. Don't miss four back to back episodes of TV's hottest comedy, The Big Bang Theory. Sure, they may be smart, but two hours of laughs like this is just plain genius. The Big Bang Theory, Sunday night, starting at 8 on My 9. Way to spend an evening. Ice cream. Is that baseball? Purple or fuchsia or what, what, what's the color? There? Pink. Pink. Hot pink. Goldschmidt tips it into the glove of Sudario. Good start for Goldschmidt. 346, three homers in. 12 ribbies had a two run blast in the first inning, going the other way with a pitch up and away. And there it is into the seats, lower deck in right field. And Goldschmidt has now reached safely in all 14 games that the Diamondbacks have played this year. That's one of those home runs, Kenny, that when you, you see a guy, it's middle, outer, third, but the pop and the strength of what Paul Goldschmidt shows. The bats that follow that, you know, to establish a show, to stand them up inside. You see Cervelli want that slider down and in, in off the plate. Well, we mentioned last night, Al, in the, the scout report, he hit a 471 foot home run last year at Chaseville in Arizona. Then 456 footer in Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Bet you would have gotten out of most ballparks. <laughs> Yellowstone, even. Look at
He's got him set up right here for just a lock up fastball in. I think Goldschmidt showing that his ability to go the other way, protect. That was a protect swing there with a good fastball away. See if he throws a fastball in. It was the target. Popped it up. Francisco Cervelli makes the play, and that will do it. So, leadoff triple by Josh Wilson. He scored on a sack fly to right, and at the end of four and a half, we're halfway through. Three nothing, Arizona. Dealers. Optimum scoreboard, three nothing Diamondbacks. Yankee fans looking for some offense. Just a leadoff single in the first inning by Gardner. That's all they've managed against that man, Wade Miley. Now, Sports Hi. Illustrated does its baseball preview issue at the end of spring training, and I'd like to read you a comment they made about Wade Miley. It says uh, the lefty had a 3.33 ERA in 194 and two third innings and showed excellent command, just 37 walks while limiting home runs, only 14 in a tough park for pitchers. But in projecting Miley's future, you see some trouble spots. His 17.8% strikeout rate was just passable for a starter, and his rate of homers allowed on fly balls, a figure that almost always reverts to the mean, was extremely low, 6.9%. Miley doesn't have overpowering stuff and wasn't terribly effective at the upper levels of the minors. Put it all together, 2012 likely represents his best work. Do you buy that, Al? Well, first of all, that one is lined to left field. Pollock makes the play to no, retire Sabelli. Absolutely, I don't buy it. And I'm not sure about all those stats that you were fly ball, ground ball, strikeout rate. The, I, what I see here with my eyeballs is that you have a left handed pitcher that has a plus fastball velocity wise. He's hit 94. Uh, he, there's no nonsense. And I think what I'm we're watching here is Yankees, you go into a game, you're not sure about it. You've seen him on video, you look at tape, and you think how he's going to exploit your weakness. Normally, what we saw last night where they took a lot of pitches. He's establishing that he's throwing strikes. You look at the last inning, the Yankees saw eight pitches in the fourth inning. So they're now have geared to say, hey, look, he's, he's getting ahead with his fastball. Go for it. And that's really the success of any pitcher. I'm not sure about all that. I think every young pitcher figures out a way to improve. We're seeing some change ups here tonight. He's throwing basically fastball curve with an occasional change. But at 93 right there, at his at his height with good downward plane, 
I don't see the what the demise that what well, the, this the 2012 was about as good as it would get. Uh, I, I don't agree. Grounded and grabbed there by Prado. He fires the first and he gets Bosch. Another fine play by Prado. Well, we saw him flash leather a little earlier in the ball game, making a great play. But this one, from his knees, is going to throw across the diamond. And accurately, the Goldschmidt for the out. That was an excellent play. So two great plays by Martin Prado at third base for the Diamondbacks tonight. Got rid of it quickly and accurately. I do, as I as I was saying, I do not agree with what they're saying. How can he not get any better? But he's going to get more experience. And if he keeps getting defense like that, he's going to win a lot of games. Nunez fouls it away. Yeah, but the reality is, Mike, the year that he had last year is as good as most major league pitchers. So I, I could see kind of that angle where how much better can it get? Mm. 16 game winner, low ERA, almost 200 innings, 29 starts. He's, uh, he's off to 2 and 0 this year with a 2.13 ERA. I think he's off to a decent start. Line to right field. Ross is there, and that will do it. So he retires. All three Yankees he faces. We go to the sixth inning. It's three nothing Diamondbacks. Dollars. Flex plans give fans the ability to choose games that fit their schedule. Pick out preferred seating locations for games against the Yankees' biggest rivals. Save money off the advanced ticket price and receive access to Yankees postseason pre-on sale. For more information, call 212 Yankees or visit Yankees.com. All right, we go to the sixth inning. It's three nothing Diamondbacks. Miguel Montero leads off against Sabathia. 0-1. As we move along in the top of the six, we'll also give you the out-of-town school board brought to you by the New York Lottery. Hey, you never know. Tied him up with that pitch. Count on two. Grounded to second, Cano to Euclid, one away. And we were talking a little bit about the uh, coaching staff of the Diamondbacks. And their third base coach, Matt Williams, was a gold glove third baseman and a feared home run hitter. There's, there's Matt coaching third tonight. 
And he did something years ago. I believe it was in that 94 season when he hit 43 home runs in 112 games before the season was canceled. I was uh, broadcasting Montreal Expo games at, those, at that time, and he was uh, the scourge of the National League that year. He was really tearing it up. And he was facing you, get or beat him. Remember Urbina? Yeah. Threw really hard. He was a closer type, you know, late inning pitcher. And Urbina threw one right at Matt Williams' head and knocked him down. And bat went him one way, the helmet went one way, and Williams got up. Ball into center for a base hit. Did not say a thing. He just looked out at the man at Urbina, took his bat, and pointed at home plate. Like he dared him, throw the next pitch over the plate. He hit the next pitch over the bleachers in left field. Must have been 450 feet. It was the greatest comeback for a hitter I have ever seen. And I, as a former hitter, I'm just saying, take that, Urbina. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Didn't say a thing to him, just pointed his bat at home plate. Just throw it over. Single by Ross. He's at first with one out. And here's Alfredo Marte. Nub slowly in front of the plate. Cervelli has one play, makes it first, advancing to second is Ross. Now, this coaching staff is impressive, as the guys have mentioned. Just heard that story about Matt Williams. Look at the totals. Over 10,000 hits, over 1,200 home runs, over 5,000 ribbies, 20 All-Star selections, nine World Series titles, two MVP awards, Gibson in 88 and Baylor in 79. There's a lot of hardware on that stuff. Kenny, what do you think about having two batting coaches, though? They're not the only team. I believe there's 12 teams now have... Two batting coaches, assistant hitting coach, and it's because of uh, you know all the work that goes in. It might be too much for one guy, mm -hmm. where uh, one guy handles the field work and the other guy handles the video, and uh, it, it kind of works that way. Well, think about how, with the bullpen coach, you basically have two, two pitching, pitching coaches. coaches. Yeah. Well, basically you do. Clubs have a, a, a pitching coach in the bullpen, and of course your pitching coach uh, dugout. Throw to second behind the runner, and Nunez could not handle it. It trickles into center, and that allows Ross to go to third. That'll be an error on Cervelli. Well, advancing the runner, I mean, two outs, it's a little less uh, daunting in the sense that the sacrifice fly will end the inning. Play that Nunez just couldn't handle. You come up, you got to make sure if you think that that base runner is off the base enough, you got to. Make a good throw. Obviously, 90 feet closer to home plate is not a good thing. Let's see that ball just kicks up. Nunez hits on the heel of his glove. And Para swings and misses, and that will do it. So the Diamondbacks strand a runner at third. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Knicks, Gardner, and Wells coming up.
the Yankees, many of us thought that there'd be a big drop off from last year's 245. They have 19 home runs, good for second in the American League. Here's Jason Nix. Foul back. He walked in the third inning. B01. So go figure, right? Second in the league. Oakland A surprising a little bit. I know what they did last year, but I don't see that as a as a home run bopping team. But here they are, the Yankees, 19, second in American League. Bobby Cano with the big home run last night. It's after a, a season in which the Yankees set a club record for home runs, 245 last year. Grounded the third. Prado. Now in the series, the Yankees are going to miss their former teammate Ian Kennedy, who was part of the three-way deal with the Tigers that brought Curtis Granderson to the Yankees. And Kennedy, though, knowing he wasn't going to start, came to New York with a purpose. He purchased three Yankee home uniform tops. Derek Jeter. Mariano Rivera and Andy Pettit and he wanted to get all three of them signed now obviously he's not going to get Derek signed because Derek's in, in Tampa rehabbing but he will get the other two he said when he was a Yankee they all treated him very well and the one guy who he really singled out was Derek Jeter he said I got sent down to the minor leagues when I struggled and Jeter called me over as I was leaving the clubhouse and said don't get your head down. He said, everybody in this room has been sent down. And you fight your way up. And you can fight your way up. He said, don't let this defeat you. Because the same thing happened to all of us. And Ian Kennedy said that meant the world to him. The 1-1. One, one. There's that quiet leadership. You know, when you talk about Derek Jeter, he's not going to be hollering and making team Newt Rockney speeches. But, you know, 1-1, one one, that's, a, that's a good example of, of how Derek has led this uh, this team. And that is so true because uh, you know, very rarely have, do you have a player who goes straight to the big leagues. It, it doesn't happen very often. What was he? Uh, I think Mickey Mantle was sent down. Yes, he was. Derek Jeter was called up in 95 and sent down. The 2 2. Grounded the short. And they get Gardner for the second out. September 1st, 2007. This is Kennedy in his first career start as a Yankee. Also his first win. Unless it is the old Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Went to USC. First round pick of the Yankees. And in 2011, 21 wins. He's done a nice job with Arizona, struggled with the Yanks. That was the one year when the Yankees went with the three kids in the rotation. Phil Hughes. Barnett Wells drives one into the gap in left center field. And he will get himself a double. That was 2008, and that was the year that the Yankees did not make the playoffs. Yankees have hit uh, not many balls on the nose tonight, but this one is scorched to the gap in left center field. Pollock and Para immediately in the retrieving mode, and they're not going to get to this one until it gets all the way to the wall. And Vernon Wells will have himself a two out double. Just the second hit of the night for the Yankees. So here's Cano, been handled uh, fairly easily by Miley. Struck out in the first and a soft ground ball in the second. He's been one of baseball's hottest hitters of late. 
And before the game, he uh, picked up his gold glove, the Rollins gold, gold glove. Also, Mark Teixeira got his gold glove. Pretty strong right side of the infield for the Yankees. Down one of them. Come up with big hits in these situations in the early part of this uh, season. So you've got Vernon Wells at second with two outs. We're in the bottom of the six. Yankees looking for a run. They're down three nothing. Just two hits against Miley. Grounded right side. Goldschmidt fields and flips to Miley, who made a great play to get Cano. He threw behind Miley, and Miley, without breaking stride, reached behind himself. Almost did a 360 and got to, he did do a 360, got to the bag for the final out. Outrageous entertainment news on Dish Nation. Join America's top DJs from coast to coast for juicy gossip and hot celebrity dish. Dish Nation weeknights at 6 and 11 here on My9. Cliff Pennington leads off the seventh and he taps one right back to CeCe. One pitch, one out. Chevy scoreboard 3 6 and 0 for the Diamondbacks, 0 2 1 for the Yankees. Single by Gardner in the first, a double by Wells in the sixth, and that's it. You can see what Miley's done. And Sabathia, six and a third, six hits, three runs, one walk, five strikeouts. Miley doesn't overpower you, but lets you put the ball in play, lets his defense do the work, and really have a hard time squaring it up. Yeah, that's what he's done, Michael. If you look at the last three innings, Yankee hitters, eight pitches they saw in the fourth, ten in the fifth. A few more in the sixth inning with Vernon Wells' double, 14 pitches. You know, it's a shame for CC to see how this game plays out for the Yankees, but outside of that two run homer in the first inning by Paul Goldschmidt going the other way. Yeah, I know in the fifth he, he sacrificed fly that Pollock had scored Josh Wilson. This has been a good. Well pitched game could have gone either way. You see that big 31 mark in that first inning. He was able to settle down. Here he is in the seventh inning. High fly ball, left field, Vernon Wells. In the second out. 
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. If you think about the triple that uh, Wilson got in the fifth inning that led to the sacrifice fly, Al, uh, that ball was actually in the glove of Brett Gardner. The fact that he had to tumble while making the catch, that's why the ball became dislodged, and it turned into a three-base hit. Brett Gardner from certainly the vantage point that we have up here in the booth he went a long yeah. way watching the angle where Brennan Bosch is and where that ball ended up Brett Gardner. How many feet it was but he went a much longer distance that ball was somewhere in this area here. Round to the short Nunez. And that will do it a one two three inning for CC Sabathia. At the end of six and a half innings of play, it's time for the seventh inning stretch here at the stadium. Diamondbacks lead the Yankees 3 0, but we will stay right where we are to honor America right here in the Bronx. And join in Kate Smith's rendition of God Bless America. Today for great offers on our most innovative lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. And Euclid swings at the first pitch and grounds at the third. One pitch, one out here in the seventh. Well, that box score showed you just two hits for the Yankees. One by Gardner and one by Wells. A walk to Jason Nix. Kevin Euclid was hit by a pitch, so four base runners for the Yankees. 
Only one got into scoring position. That was a double by Vernon Wells. Here's Ben Francisco. Good. Chevy scoreboard has diamonds. Diamondbacks up three nothing. Francisco's 0 for 2 today. So far 0 for 10 as a yank. But there's his first Yankee hit. Pollock plays it out there, and Francisco smartly holds it first. Pollock played it well, played the carom well off the wall, and then exhibited a very strong throwing arm as he got the ball in quickly. And when you're down 3 nothing, the only time you should try and advance is if you're going to make it standing up. And watch this play by Pollock. First of all, he plays the carom. And then unleashes a strong throw to second. Just 80 pitches for Miley, and here's Cervelli. Change up, 0-1. You know the little things that the. D-backs are going to have to do this year to compete with the Giants and the Dodgers. That's a good example right there. As you just explained, Ken, the Pollock outfielders field the baseball fundamentally sound. You cut the, the runner off at second base, keep the double play in order. You have a pitcher on the mound that's pounding the zone, does not hesitate. It's just get the ball and go, doesn't shake his catcher. Your fielders are on their toes, limited pitches. Same pitch, 0 and 2. And it, you know you look how he's established this game here and the Yankees have historically have been hitters that generally look for pitches wait for a pitcher's mistake he established early in this game that he's going to throw strikes work fast throw strikes primarily a two pitch pitcher until now in these last couple innings of change up those two back to back change ups for Cervelli and a three three in a row. Okay, Al, where are you going here? I'm going to span probably that, that breaking ball that he's thrown down the zone. I know you're somewhat conscious of the runner at first, but anything off the plate, make him swing at a pitcher's pitch. Three, four changeups in a row. Now that's one of those half hearted. He, I was talking to Greg Schulte, he's the uh, radio person for the D backs, and he said that he's never shaken. And, and Miguel Montero says, look, uh, just once in a while, shake just to put some doubt in the hitter's mind. And I say that because, you know, in that case there, Montero change up four in a row to Cervelli. Sometimes a pitcher will throw a pitch not with the conviction and the heart behind it. So you kind of just throw it out there just to get to the next pitch. Those could get you in trouble. Yes. A little hand move is a slide step. It's a quicker leg kick. Is that five in a row? Well, no, he threw the. Uh, was, no, he threw a fastball foul ball. Fouled off. So it was four in a row fastball. And the fifth pitch or sixth pitch was this change up here. Nice action. I mean, you, you know, you look at Miley. I mean, I know all the reasons why this guy was so dominant last year as a rookie pitcher. Good late down and away bite to that change up. That one is looped in the left field. It is a base hit for Bosch. Francisco goes to third. Bosch is at second with a double. Nice job by Brennan Bosch. He gets jammed here. This is a little bit of a knuckle sandwich. Throws it out there over the third baseman's head, but immediately was thinking too. He gets that ball out there. Pollock has shown that he's a good defender. Slow enough where he took a little bit too much time or not having a chance to get that ball right out of the box. Red and Bosch saying this is going to be a double. I'm going all the way. Doesn't hesitate, picks up the ball. Well done, get to second base. That's his first double of the season. So he's filled that column. Big spot for Eduardo Nunez. As Bosch has doubled the fourth hit for the Yanks. Strike. 
Well, if Eduardo was watching closely how he pitched Cervelli, there were five changeups of a six pitch at bat to Cervelli. Now, Eduardo Nunez is a very good fastball hitter. Got the fastball, but up out of the zone, one of one. Could be the tease fastball. Just showed it to him. Yes. Diamondbacks have a left hander up, Tony Sip. They don't want to bring in a right. They don't want to unleash the lefties on the Yankee bench. Fastball upstairs, one and two. Couple high, high fastballs. Tough to catch up. Good life on that fastball. Yankees hitless in five at bats with runners in scoring position tonight. Two change up. And now the Yankees have a tying runs on base. Golf Nagy, the pitching coach, will go out and talk with Wade Miley, who'd been super effective over the first six and now runs into trouble here with two outs in the seventh. This is kind of giving them a breather, right? With uh, two outs here, and the Yankees are threatening the best uh, opportunity of the evening. Yeah, one of the scrambles a little bit, and as Michael says, uh, we were just talking about this guy's just cruising along, limiting uh, very few pitches per at bat to the Yankee hitters. That was a nice at bat by Eduardo Nunez. Saw all of his pitches, got the one two count after that first pitch changeup. You know, the work of walk, good job. Francisco is at third, Bosch at second, Nunez over at first. Appears he's having trouble getting the fastball down, you see. Now I know he got a, a strike to uh, Nunez, but he chased the pitch out of the zone. First pitch is high to Nix with the fastball. Two and up. And sometimes it's a sign of a pitcher who's getting a little tired. He can't force the ball down in the zone as he was earlier in the ball game. Great point, Kenny. And in it, it, doing so, as a result of thinking you have as a pitcher to generate more, you overthrow because you're trying to find it. And as it, as because you're overthrowing, get underneath it, as you just said, not finishing. Challenging him with fastballs, two and one. Here it is, hit it right down the middle. 2 0 fastball. Still a little up in the zone, though. There was. Four straight fastballs. That was 94 miles an hour. Now Brad Ziegler has joined SIP. Gardner's on deck. Unless this one is placed on a tee for Knicks. And it's not. He walks and that forces in the run. The Yankees are on the board. It's now 3 1 Diamondbacks. Well, Kirk Gibson has seen enough as 
Miley just unravels here in the seventh. Leaves the bases loaded. He's going to go to the left hander Sip to face Gardner. I think Warren Zevon was writing about Wade Miley as an excitable boy. He is so upset with himself in that dugout right now. Barely able to control himself. Now takes it out on that towel. I've been there. Wow. You know, you cruise it along, you, you feel the shutout, Yankee Stadium, young kid, first time here. Jerry Tar Tarkanian. Coach of UNL and UNLV years ago, used to put the towel in his mouth. Basketball coach. So Tony Sip will take over on a tough situation here, his eighth game. And he's going to face Brett Gardner. And all Miley could do is watch. So the Yankees finally get on the board, and now a, a good opportunity here with the bases loaded and two outs. Bosch at third, Nunez at second, and Nix, a patient at bat, walking with the bases loaded to pick up a ribby and give the Yankees a run. He's at first. Only one at bat history with Brett Gardner and Tony Sip. 0 for 1. That's when Sip with his Cleveland. Breaking ball strike. Good numbers of the bases loaded in his career. His speed at second, well, you could make the argument a single would tie the game. Diving back outfielders are, are up. They want to have a play at the play to place. There is a base hit, but the danger there is if Gardner finds a gap, they're going to be losing because all three runners are going to score. Paro really shallow in center. Nice block by Montero who saved the run. Some glove and a little bit of the chest protector on this one to keep it in front of him. The old 58 foot spike fastball. A helpless feeling as a starter. You've got your reliever in the mess and hoping that he gets out of it. 
should get a pretty good pitch here to hit because he doesn't want to go to three balls and a strike. So he might be aiming just for the middle of the play here. Two one. Fastball hits the outside corner. Two and two. I think Gardner thought that ball was down. Yep. See, that'd be a good side shot right here. At the knees. Good job. Of, good job of receiving by Montero. He bring the ball up definitely right at the end there. Just give the umpire a little bit of look at it. One run scores. Here comes Nunez. The throw is way wide. And the Yankees have tied the game at three. A two run single for Gardner. He goes to second on the throw. A new ball game here in the seventh. Well, Miley can just only watch now. One that bat by Brett Gardner. Let's go pitch by pitch. First pitch curveball from Tony Sip. Another curveball. See if Brett Gardner will bite. That was just a little 58 foot fastball. The high middle of the plate fastball. Middle again. Tony Sip misses his spot. Great piece of hitting by Brett Gardner going the other way. Eduardo Nunez on his horse. See Robbie Thompson waving him. An aggressive throw by AJ Pollock way up the line. Yankees tie ball game here at the bottom of the seventh. And again, Gibson will go to the bullpen, bring in the right hander Ziegler. Vernon Wells coming up. Runners in second and third for the Yanks. And as we move along, we'll also get to the out of town scoreboard brought to you by Jaguar. See the new model year lineup at JaguarUSA.com. Big hit by Brett Gardner. Yeah, Gardner got a hit on the count, and then Sip was forced to throw some pitches, and that one was too hittable. Remember the pitch that was called the strike? The close one made it two and two. That one was up a little higher, and Gardner was able to recognize it better the second time. Pollock's throw, although it's a strong one, is offline. And the Yankees have tied the ball game. Good hitting by Brett Gardner. A big spot here for Vernon Wells against the sidewinding Brad Ziegler. Game is tied at three. Second and third, two outs. And that one is chopped to short. Pennington. One pitch for Ziegler, and he gets out of further trouble. But the Yankees have come back to tie the score. Three runs on three hits. Two men left. We go to the eighth. It's a three three game.
innovative lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Paul Goldschmidt with that two-run home run in the first inning. And then A.J. Pollock with a sack fly. And that came in the fifth inning. And those are the three runs for the Diamondbacks. But the Yankees answered with three in the bottom of the seventh inning. And it's 3-3. As Sabathia is still in there. Sporting a pitch count total of 97. And the pitch to Prado is a strike. Hey, as well as Miley pitched during the course of the game, it all unraveled quickly for him, didn't it? Just couldn't throw strikes there, did it? David Robertson pitched the eighth inning yesterday. Check swing, slow roller in front of the plate. Cervelli gets an angle, one away. Even with uh, Ben Francisco's single, he gets Cervelli on a strikeout. And then remember, the boss, little, uh, excuse me, double down the left field line, couple walks, and Boom. Boom. But look at CC. You know, this is a 31 pitch inning, 31 pitch in the first inning. Last inning through six pitches. I mean, just your your veteran winner, your ace, that just figures it out. You even said it earlier, Kenny. You know, as you see guys, they settle in, figure out what's working, what's not. Better idea, command on certain pitches. They usually see that more from a veteran pitcher than a younger pitcher. So hold on. They, they panic. Yep. I'll never forget Rick Roden my, when I first got to the big leagues here with the Yankees. And he'd always say to me, I was in a rotation with Tommy John, Richard Dotson, Tom, uh, Gidry. The latter part of his career, David Hernandez, you talk about a good arm right there, a set up guy for JJ Putz in the Arizona Dimebacks. He always say, take off, push the brake, not the accelerator. And, uh, you know, Rick Roden, fine, big league pitcher for years. He was in the latter part of his, and I just, you know, it takes a while to figure that out, to believe it. Two and one. I mean, most of the time it's out of necessity. You know, you look at CC at 32 years old, still plenty left. You know, he had the elbow surgery, but you know, he's not throwing 97 98 anymore as he did with the Cleveland Indians as a young pitcher. He's learned how to change speeds and locate. Two and two. That's located. That's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Knee high corner with some tail away from right hand hitter. High ball right field. Brennan Boss will put it away for the second out of the inning. Hey, after the final pitch, stay tuned for the Verizon Fios game wrap up. Russ Salzberg will break down tonight's action, plus, have news and reaction from the locker room. The Verizon Fios game wrap up tonight on the 10 o'clock news on my nine. That'll bring up Montero. Owen one. Grounded foul, grabbed there by Euclid. Two pretty good breaking balls in a row. Damn. Does he bounce one? See if he chases this one? I, I'm thinking CC knows that this is his last batter. I think either way, with Cody Ross on deck, 106 pitches, get a chance to get in the dugout, hope your guys score something to take away the sting on the bat, something away. There goes Slider. Savelli wants the ball down. Bounce it, see if you're chasing. You know, when you look here, especially Yankee Stadium, you know, the, the late innings, that's why often closers always go away because it's easier to pull a ball if you make a mistake in, make them work the bigger part of the field. You know, here in this situation, even if it's the right pitch setup wise to come in, you miss inside to a left handed hitter, it could be big fly. 
Another slider. The one two. Swing and a miss. Cervelli tags Montello and a one two three inning for CC. He's retired the last eight in a row. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It is a three three game. With Dodge passion and design with interleague games now being played throughout the season should a the use of the DH stay as it is B teams from both leagues use the DH or C the DH be done away with altogether checks a B or C to 70377 or go to my 9 tv.com find out the results right after the game it's take on Russ brought to you by Dodge Dart. Well, Kirk Gibson will go to his fourth pitcher David Hernandez, hard throwing right hander. 3 3 game. The Yankees get their three runs in the bottom of the seventh, and now it'll be Cano, Euclid, and Francisco's due up, but they have some lefty options on the bench. Yankee fans might remember Hernandez. He was uh, with the Baltimore Orioles. Came to the big leagues with the Orioles back in 09. And was primarily a starter. Then they began to use him out of the bullpen. And eventually moved on to the Diamondbacks. Travis Hafner with the bat will pinch hit for Francisco. And pitch outside to Cano. The Orioles traded Hernandez and Cam Nicolaio, a reliever, to Arizona for Mark Reynolds. Front of that one. And the count one and two. Two hits for Cano against Hernandez. One of the two was a home run. Wilson one away. So Cano 0 for 4. And when the cameras are out, that usually means Mo's up. Closed the game yesterday. Tie game at home. You bring your closer into pits tonight because there'll never be a save situation. The Yankees still have a chance to score a run and make it a safe situation. The 0-1 to Euclid. 
sky high pop up. And it's in seats. Two home runs for you, Blissa Fernandez, out of five hits. So he's in a hole, 0 2. On deck is Hafner. Ninety-five mile an hour fastball. Yeah, a little different giddy up from David Hernandez from what the Yankee hitters have seen with Wade Miley. Ninety-five slider curveball. David Hernandez has worked more on his curveball, primarily fastball slider. Euclid's just missed that. Breaking ball, strike three. Euclid's frozen. Goes down looking for the second out. Three heaters in a row. Got it by him. Middle of the plate, and then look at them. What's called a front door slider. Throw right at the right hander's front hip. Right handed hitter's front hip, and then boom, locked them up. Nice pitch. This pitch normally is going away. That ends up being right down the middle, but it starts at the right handed hitter's hip. Travis Hafner will pinch hit for Francisco. Got a big hit in the seventh inning. That's one out single. He was one for three. Hafner's gotten off to a good start this year. You might wonder, well, how is he as a pinch hitter? 54 pinch hitting appearances, 15 hits, three homers, 17 ribbies. That one is drilled deep to right field. There it goes. See ya. The Yankees have the lead. A pinch hit solo home run for Travis Hafner. And it's a save situation now. Now, well, pinch hitting is one of the hardest things to do. In the major leagues, but Travis after didn't take him long. One swing of the bat on the first pitch from Hernandez is a hard thrower, and it was right down Hafner Boulevard. He jumps on it into the seats. He knew it, and the Yankees are up four to three. Been sitting around for seven innings. Here's Cervelli trying to make it back to back. Chases the high fastball. First pitch heater, fourth home run on the year. What a job Hafter's done since coming over from Cleveland. 96 mile an hour, turned on it. Yankees up 4 3. Get some love in the dugout. He has fit in very well with this team, and you get big hits like that, you'll fit in even better. That's the second pitch hit home run for the Yankees this year. Brendan Bosch had one earlier this year. And the Yankees 20th home run of the year as a team. Bosch's pinch hit home run was just a tack on in Cleveland. This obviously a tiebreaker here in New York. So Judge Hardy pushes the right button at the right time. Down 3-0 with two outs. In the seventh, and now it's 4 3 in the eighth. As you look ahead to the top of the ninth, it's Ross, Marte, and Para scheduled to hit. You figure with Chavez and Hinsky on the bench, you're going to see one of those two. Probably Hinsky. Strike three, Cervelli down looking. But the Diamondbacks got prompt. The man they call Prunk with a pinch hit home run. Now he turns it over to Mariano to close it out.
Tri-State Ford dealers by Chase. Get the new home app today and get moving with Chase. And by Jaguar. See the new model year lineup at JaguarUSA.com. Crowd of 34,369 buzzing after Hafner's pinch hit tie-breaking home run. So the Yankees could pick up a victory if Mariano Rivera can pick up three outs. Tightening up the defense, Ichiro Suzuki goes in for Bosch in right field. And the 43-year-old Rivera will try to get his second save in this series. What has he done so far? Four games, three for three in saves. Four hits, four innings, a walk, and three strikeouts. Cody Ross will lead it off. Ross two for three against Sabathi, who battled, hung in there, and now could pick up yep. a victory. So satisfying if the Yankees could pull this out. You know, for a pitcher to, to struggle in the sense of high pitch count, the two run homer in the first inning, Goldschmidt settled down, had some nice innings, and then you just wait for your offense to, to burst open as they did in these last two innings. After the first inning, the Diamondbacks only have three base runners. Very odd to see Rivera go 3 and 0 on anybody, and that's the count right now on Ross. Eric Chavez is on deck to pinch hit for Morte. Ross tried to buy that one, but Phil Cousy said, nope, that's a strike. Three and one. Fly ball right field. Ichiro will get his first try. One away. So it comes back from 3 0 to get Ross. Chavez has had the most success of these uh, diving back hitters outside of Jason Kubel's on the disabled list. Five for 15. No home runs from Chavez to Mariano. 333 batting average. Chavez 0 for 4 yesterday. Pinch hitting here in the ninth. Strike on the outside corner, 0 and 1. The 0 1. Too much movement on that cutter, 1 and 1. So the Yankees scored three runs in the seventh. The big hit a two run single by Brett Gardner with two outs. And then Hafner's pinch hit home run in the eighth inning is giving the Yankees a lead. Again, too much movement. Count two and one. Rivera deals. Having better luck on the outside corner, two and two. Just dotted the outside corner, Michael. You have to, the cutter in, you say too much movement. You just want to make sure that you don't miss in this little box on the inside part of the plate. Then he backdoors the cutter. Beautiful pitch. You see Chavez just bailing a little bit, looking for the cutter inside. The 2-2. Two -two. Grounded to short. Nice hop for Nunez. Steadies himself. Two outs. Yankees and out of way. That will bring up Parra. Parra one for three at a drag bunt single in the fourth inning. Fly ball a right in the first, struck out in the sixth. So the Yankees are out of way. Time call.
Louisiana hitters are so aware of that cutter on the inner half that uh, can break your bat that it's almost like they're giving them the outside corner. Diamondbacks down to their final strike. Goes up the ladder a little bit more here. See if he can get him to chase one out of the zone. All these years, keeps repeating his delivery, throwing quality pitches, quality strikes. He needs one more. Power making him work. Outside one or two. The Yankees won last night four to two. They lead this one four to three. And the pitch two and two. The Yankees struggled against Wade Miley for six innings, couldn't get anything going. Then a two out rally in the seventh gave them three runs. The Hafner home run in the eighth gave them a 4 3 lead. And now Rivera trying to close it out for CC Sabathia. And he should be able to. There's a ground ball to Cano. And the Yankees win this one 4 to 3. So Rivera puts down the Diamondbacks 1 2 3. And the Yankees have really bounced back from a shaky start. One and four in their first five games, seven and one in their last eight. Hafner with the big blow, a pinch hit home run to break a 3 3 tie as the Yankees win the second game of this series, four games to three. We have so much more to go here on my nine. We've got awards to give out. Maybe Gardner with that big two run single. Maybe Mo with a save. So many decisions, so many choices. We'll settle down and make them and tell you in a moment.